No, before memory, <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty pretty far back. For our youth group, the average age group, not including the teachers, of course, is somewhere between 11 to uh, 18 years old. Okay, currently it's 17. Oh, well, so it's 11 through 17, 18. <coughs> I think the youngest kid in our one of the youngest is my son Daniel. Uh, he's he's 11 now, so him, Joseph, and Daniel are one day apart. So all three are about the same age, and they're they're the youngest. Uh, and I know that Daniel knows between right and wrong. I know that he knows the difference between what he's supposed to do and why, and what he's not supposed to do and why. So, if the youngest of the group knows the difference between right and wrong, I'm going to assume that all of you know between right and wrong. Okay? So, do you know that you know the difference between right and wrong? Here's the next question. When you know something to be wrong, do you still do it? James, do you still do it even though you know it's wrong? Sometimes? Jimin? Sometimes? Hemin? No, not Hemin too. <laughs> How about all of you at, at home? Do you know something to be wrong and still do it? It can be times when your parents ask you to stop doing whatever that you were doing before and do something else. It could be that they ask you to stop watching TV, stop playing games, stop looking at your phone, stop daydreaming, and do your homework, do your chores, or just spend some time with them. You know, you know that you need to respect and honor your parents by being obedient to them, but while you know, how many of you still are disobedient. How many of you just say, okay, okay, I'm going to get to it when I get to it? It can be times when your parents maybe refuse to get you the stuff you want. I know the biggest war that the parents have with the youth these days is with cell phones. How, how old were you when you got your cell phone? <laughs> All right. So, I know a lot of lot of youth, young youth, have. I mean, they just go to war with their parents to 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 get a cell phone too. And again, you know that you should be obedient. You could plead with them, but a lot of youth go to the next level. Right? They throw a fit. They go on this tantrum, anger tantrum, and, and refuse to love their parents or something. You know that this is wrong. It can be times when you're, maybe your classmate is just getting on your nerves. You know, you, you know you are supposed to love your neighbor. Actually, you're supposed to even love your enemies. You know that. But you just don't understand how someone can be so selfish, so mean, so dense so wrong, so rude, so stubborn, and you hold a grudge against that person, or even downright just hate them. It can be times when you know that you shouldn't be watching something, but you choose to watch it anyways. God may be convicting your heart, but you choose to overrule that conscience. It can be times when you know that you should be humble, but you choose to put yourself first, your welfare, 
your decision, your prerogative over others. At times you may even think that we are even worth more than someone else, that we are more valuable. Maybe we are smarter. We are more talented. Maybe even we are better Christian. And we judge other people. It can be times when you know that you are supposed to spend time with God. And you just choose not to. Whether it's because you're just lazy or because you rather do something you want to do. You do realize that Jesus Christ died for every one of the sins that you have committed and you will commit. Every one of those sins that you are choosing to commit, He died for every one of those. He was hurt. He was injured. He was tortured for every one of those. To the people who were crucifying him, mocking him, Jesus said this, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In today's scripture, Paul confesses that he was a self-righteous and a proud man who persecuted Christians and Christ himself, but that he received mercy because he had acted in ignorance, that he did not know what he was doing. It seems that our God is so merciful that he forgives people, excuse me, <coughs> allergies, not COVID-19. It seems that our God is so merciful that he forgives people who sin in their ignorance, but no, not what they do. We all know this, right? You know, I also experienced this in a very minor way. I think I told you this maybe a couple of times already. But when Daniel was two years old, you know, I was holding him and I was standing in line for lunch after Sunday, school, uh, Sunday service. And all of a sudden, Daniel just slapped me across the face. And it was, I mean, it, I mean, two years old, you might think, oh, well, how hard he could, you know, can, he almost brought tears to my eyes when he hit me. And it was really loud. And there's this, everybody in front of that line turned around and, and looked. And one of the girls, she looked and, 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 and like pointed to Daniel and said, bad boy, bad boy. And, and I just turned to her and I said, He's not a bad boy. He just doesn't know what he's doing. He's only two years old. He doesn't know that he can't just slap me across the face. He just doesn't know that. In a very small way, I had a glimpse of what God must have felt and is continuing to feel right now. But what would you think if Daniel did that now? He's 11 years old and He's, I don't know, 5'3", five, 5'4", five, he's about 140 pounds, I don't know, he's pretty big. Now, if he hits me across the face, do you think, can I still say, it's okay, he doesn't know what he's doing, can I do that? No. He now knows what he is doing. This is the message that I want to convict you today. Do you know that you know, all of you, you know what you are doing. You are no longer, you can no longer say with Daniel when he was two that I don't know what I'm doing. Do you know that you know it's a sin to disobey your parents, but you still disobey them anyways? Maybe in your heart, maybe in physically. Do you know that you know that it's a sin to regard your thoughts, your choices, your decisions, yourself above other people? But some of you are still refusing to be humble. Do you know that you know that you are to desire and enjoy God, but you choose to desire enjoyment of the world? 
enjoy the pleasures of the world. Do you know that you no longer are kids? You can no longer claim, but I didn't know what I was doing. I don't know what I'm doing. You know what is right. You know what is wrong. You know what God wants from you and what he doesn't. You know that what pleases God and what breaks his heart. All of you from Joseph, Daniel, all the way to teacher James, teacher Daniel, every one of you know. You can no longer claim, I do not know what I'm doing. Now, we all know that our God is a God of mercy and grace. But there was one particular category of people that our merciful God called you brood of vipers. Who were they? Okay, yes, they were the Pharisees. Thank you, Rebecca. Pharisees, these were the people who people looked up to because they devoted themselves to God, to, to doing God's will. It, it's like the pastors today. So it's like Jesus, while he said to every one of the youth group, you don't know what you're doing. God forgive them. And he turned to me and James and, and Daniel and said, You brood of vipers. You snakes. <laughs> Everybody's looking at James. <laughs> you know what he also said is, Jesus called them hypocrites. Meaning that they wear a mask. They're like an actor. Jesus said, they worship me in vain. Meaning that their praise, their worship, was only lip service, a show. Inwardly, they did not love God. They weren't right with God. They loved being honored. Oh, I'm the pastor. Oh, I'm the teacher. Listen to me. Oh, they loved to get that attention. They said they're honoring God. They're glorifying God with their... With, with their mouth, but in their heart, they were glorifying and honoring themselves. Oh, I want this attention. I want people to listen to me. By any chance, do you call yourself a Christian, but are not listening to Christ? By any chance, do you call yourself a Christian, but really don't wish to be like Christ. I don't want to be like Christ. I want to be me. I'm proud of who I am. By any chance, do you call yourself a Christian, but really don't care about Christ at all? That what you care for is something, everything other than Christ. Do you know that you know? As we close, I want to remind all of you once again. Do you know that you know what you are doing? Every time you know something to be a sin, but do them anyways. Every time you are thinking of something that you shouldn't be thinking of, but let those thoughts and imagination just take hold of you in your heart and your mind. Every time you know that God is calling you to do something, but you dis disregard him. You choose to be indifferent to God. You are sinning against God. And you do know what you are doing. You are breaking, you are choosing to break your father's heart. It's as if Daniel was choosing to just blatantly disrespect me. And said, Dad, I really don't care what you want. I don't care what you say. I'm going to do what I want to do. Do you know that you know? It's not like a two-year-old Daniel slapping me. It'll be like a teenager Daniel slapping me. Choosing to not love. By any chance, is this you? If this is you, what are you to do? Acts 17.30 says this. 
In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now He commands all people everywhere to repent. Dear youth of Cornerstone and teachers, today I want every one of you to recognize the fact that you do know what you are doing. I want everyone to grasp the fact that you are accountable for your hearts, your thoughts, and your actions. I want everyone to think to yourself, do I want to consciously do, say, and think those thoughts, do those actions that this pleases God. I want all of you to commit to yourself. I want you to say, God, I commit myself to you. That I want to do what's right. I want to say what is right. I want to think those right thoughts. Not because I fear the punishment of, of hell. Because I love you. Because you're my father. Do you know that you know? If you are sinning, I need for you to go to God and say that you are sorry. I need for you to truly repent to God. I need for you to ask God for strength and power so you no longer do what you know to be wrong. Because you don't have the strength to do it on your own. You cannot resist on your own. It's impossible. Satan knows all of the tricks in the book. You need God. You need to be connected with God. You need to be one with God. You need to abide in God so you could have the power, the strength, the wisdom to overcome. For the next month, we'll be talking about repentance. Today, I just need you you to understand that you have a need for repentance, that you do know what you are doing, and that you need God to overcome your sin. I want you to all have that mind, okay? And prepare for our next month as we talk about repentance. Let's pray. Our Father, we come before you, Lord. We do know what we're doing, yet you are so kind to us, Lord. You forgive us, not 70 times, but 70 million times, Lord. We do the wrong thing, but you say, I love you anyways, but I need you to come back to me. Because every time when you do something that you know to be wrong, you're being more and more and more, you're drifting away from me. You're letting yourself just be indifferent to me. You're fading away from my presence. That I can no longer fulfill you. I can no longer make you happy. I can no longer fill you with peace. I pray that as we all know that we know what we're doing and the sins that we're committing is a willful sin, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just convict our hearts and have give us the desire to come back to you, Lord. Because, because we know that you are the only thing that really matters in this life. We know that for a fact. But we forget it so often because it's so easy because Satan just fills our presence, our circumstances with all these other stuff. Anything but you. And we need your strength and your power to remain in you, Lord. I pray that you would be with each and every one of our youth. Convict their heart, Lord, and have them desire, desire you, Lord. I pray that you be with me as I teach about repentance, about coming back to you for the next month, that your Holy Spirit just grab hold of me and just declare, proclaim the message that you would have our youth listen. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I also pray that your Holy Spirit would just hold us 
Father, you would just grab hold of us, that you would just provide for us, Lord. Keep us safe, keep us healthy, provide for all of our needs, and give us peace this week. Whatever is bothering us, whatever is tempting us, you would help us to overcome and fill your miracle in our life, Lord. We pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, let's go into our small